Hello guys, Shavafai here. Welcome to another video in my GD script tutorial series. So today we're gonna cover creating twins in Godot. Twins are a way of interpolating data and in Godot we can interpolate both data and functions. So we're gonna cover all aspects of using twins. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. So here we have a sprite and we have the twin script attached to it. And to create a twin, you only have a simple variable ready. Then create twin. Then we have a target. So say for example, you want to move towards a target using the twin. We'd first create a target reference, and then we create a twin property. So we say t the twin property. Then we need to pass ourselves, and then we need to pass a string as the position. So position. And that's any property that you could find in here. So transform position. So that's what we're grabbing. And then we need the reference to the target's position. So we say target dot position. And then we set how fast it should get there. So let's put two seconds. And that's the most basic twin. So let's first at assign that target. And we're gonna use that target. So let's see where it is and see in here. And then we could just run the scene. There you go. Could always move it around. All right. Pretty basic. You could also chain twins together. So let's create another twin and we're going to twin its scale. So t dot twin property. We say self again. Then we say scale. And scale is a vector 2. So we need to create another vector 2. And let's set it to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Let's do that in one second. There you go. Fills up when it gets to that point. So if you want both of these to run in parallel, all you need to do is come back to the twin. When you create a twin, you tell it to set it as parallel. So parallel. And it's true by default. So let's run it there. You notice it gets big and, and move at the same time. You could also tell it to loop. And the way we need to do that is we first need to set its original position. So let's say var pos. We're going to use the original position first. So let's say pos equals position. Then right here, we could just copy this guy. Then say position to equal that original pos. And then scale, we could set it back to original. Then the way we set loops is we, we could say set loops. And we could call chain here. What this does is it waits till these scale up and then scales these afterwards or run these afterwards and set loops just loops indefinitely or you could set the amount of times you want it to loop. Okay, so you also have transition types. So here I set up the sprite to be at the top of the screen and the target on the bottom. We have a bounce transition type. So let's do that real quick. Put this at three seconds and use transition set transition set trends and let's use bounce there you go. and that that works as expected but we need to set this easing to just fall in the beginning and then bounce at the end so what we do here now is we could also set easing you could use a backslash here so we could go to the next line so we could say set ease and then we could ease out not in all right then let's try it again there you go okay so that's enough of tweening property let's look at tweening a method so to tween a method we call tween method and we have to pass in a callable so let's say print name for example print my name and we need to start it from start point which is nothing and then my name shall be fire and then the duration, or let's put two seconds. So what we do now is create that function and then pass my name string. And we could say print, let's print it to the console, my name. And that's it for that. So let's run this and see what happens. Get that down there. That's what a tween method does. Could use it for a lot of different stuff, but could even count maybe. So this will be useful for a score to so 1000 
and it will just add up that number instead. There you go. So oh, ten thousand, and that's it for tweening methods. So you could also use that in a chain with a property tween. But let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's use the same function. So for example, let's just call a tween callback. So let's say let's just put Chevy Fire here. Chevy Fire. So what we are doing now is we're gonna tween a do a tween callback. So for example, let's tween the spread again. Then after it does that, we need to say tween callback. Tween callback and then let's pass in the print again. Print my name. The callable target position so what this does is tween the property first the position to the target and then afterwards it calls this callback function that's a bit slow but oh well here you go as soon as it reaches the end it calls function we could also use this to query free maybe Set this to a shorter time, not for seconds. Run it. Go. So it deletes itself after it reaches. Useful. You could also set a delay. So here I wrote the tween position to go back to its original position. So right after the last tween, we set delay. So set delay. Let's put maybe a one, ah, two seconds. So what this does is call this tween. This tween is delayed by two seconds and then this tween gets called. Could check that out as well. Bang, it waits two seconds and go back to its original. So with that now, we have another one. We could do set interval. So we could say t dot tween interval. This is the same as set in a delay between both. So let's see the two seconds here again. So instead of setting it on this, we're setting it between them. Waits there and goes back. And that's it for the most part. So let's do an experiment. Okay, so here we have a score label. And then I have a particle I could call emidon at any point. And then in the main node, you want to reveal the score so we are using a, creating this function and then we pass in the amount that we want to count up to so in reveal score we create a tween then we want to tween a method and that's the score points let me move that down and then we pass in zero and the score that we need and then we do it in 2.5 seconds so after that's completed we then scale the score label up and then bring it back down a little bit and then after that now we do a lambda function uh, there's a tutorial in that somewhere in the series then we call uh, GPU particles 2d we set emit into true within the lambda function and that should be it so let's look how that looks and 10,000 and splash there you go now on my sprite now, we have a few other stuff going on here. We have a go to position, it's basically just moves to a point. And we have a tween callback that sets the next position. And then another tween callback that calls back the same tween again. So the reason we do this is because you can't change the position once the tween is set. So we're basically creating a new tween with the new position. So let's... Add this here, let's say get next position or set next position, set next position. Then we could call go to position. And I set the transition to be elastic, so it looks a bit wobbly. And we could call tween scale as well. And this will always be looping. And that's what you saw at the beginning of the video. So let's also call that. So what did I call it? Tween scale. And let's look at it. There you go. <clears throat> and this will loop forever unless we stop it somehow or we change scenes or get rid of this mode. 
Alright guys, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe. See you in another one.